On today's show, we'll be talking about how Atua continues to milk a previously difficult to achieve complication into another microbrand bestseller. In our blueprint segment, we'll be breaking down the design aspects of the latest offerings of Artem Straps. And finally, in your viewer comments, well, you're now talking about your wives. A few weeks ago, we showed you a revolutionary product, but where's the product now? Wait a minute. A few weeks ago, we showed you a revolutionary product that really helps your hair grow as full as possible while uh, solving some of your horological conundrums. Just look at my hair right now. It grew in just a few weeks and it might stay that way for quite a bit of time. Or maybe since we still need to come up with the funds to, you know, have a proper haircut. Did I say that out loud? No. Now, the best compliment for this product is another advanced and budget-friendly product, the Horology Story Follicle Extractor. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a branding there. It's just too small to see. Just believe me, okay? You've seen on YouTube how people are promoting this motorized razor that's popularizing the word manscape. Well, if you're really going to manscape, there is a much better way, a much manlier way to actually do it. And that is by extracting each and every follicle of hair one by one. Nothing is more manly than doing it the hard way. That's what I firmly believe. This revolutionary product is designed after tried and tested torture practices throughout history. No other razor out there can deliver such a sadistic sense of satisfaction than removing each and every follicle of hair down to its roots. Look at Adrian right here. You've seen him with a full set of hair and now it's all gone thanks to this revolutionary product that we just released and it took him hours to remove each and every strand. You too can now enjoy the same satisfaction as Adrian did. As you buy this Horology Story hair follicle extractor, you will be surprised at how it naturally complements your watch collection. How can we say that? Well, because the more time that you spend pulling your hair, one strand at a time, the more that you look at your watch. The more that you also spend time with this timepiece that you recently bought or that's been in your collection for a long, long time. Now, we cannot guarantee that your time in the bathroom will be pleasant, especially when you have other members of the family that's waiting for you. This revolutionary product not only complements your watch collection, but it also enables you to save up more money for the next purchase. So why spend hundreds of dollars in a motorized razor that's being promoted by a big time YouTube channel when you can always go the budget friendly route and buy the Horology Story Hair Follicle Extractor. And now you can save those dollars and spend it on the next watch purchase along with other Horology Story products that we've been releasing in the past few weeks. This is all part of a bundle. So believe me, it will help you watch collectors, watch parents out there, as nothing is more manly than pulling your hair one strand at a time. Now we're going to talk about Atawa. Again, I love, I, I love this brand. The only thing that I don't like about it is the name. So if they could come up with a rebrand one day, you know, take a hint from CRISPR Word that would be much appreciated from this watch pirate. And I was ready to actually roast this latest piece, you know, because I am that kind of watch pirate that feeds the hand that feeds it, you know. But then I saw one little detail that pulled me back from this depressing situation of roasting the very sponsor that is um, funding this channel and pulling me into promoting it as one of the best releases of the brand. So what made me flip-flop faster than a growing barnacle on a ship's hull? Wait, anything is faster than a growing barnacle under the ship's hull. Anyway, so what made me flip-flop faster? Find out in this latest review of the tarantula from uh, the tarantula. Oh, that's that name. That's also a bad name. Anyway, find out in this latest review of the tarantula from Atwa. 
This video is brought to you by Atolac. This is the third iteration of the Wandering Hour complication from the brand. It should feel familiar and even derivative as it's a mechanism that's not just reused by this company but also other brands competing for your wallet. Zurich, Gorilla, Dewis, Fantasos are just some of the names that are not Atowak who's also using this way to tell the time. Most are using these affordable Japanese movements but if you push your budget and aspirations high enough, you'll find Hotlands, Urwerk, and AP occupying these spaces nicely. Occupying my wrist is easy enough for the tarantula, even though it's as slender as a mermaid's appendage. That's all due to the lugless setup that also hides a convenient feature. New to Atavac is the latch spring bar mechanism that is a touch more premium feeling than your quick release spring bars. We're seeing these also on newer straps from Swiss brands such as Zenit. I'm more than happy to get this feature on a watch that's just a fraction of a Zenit pilot's cost. Made from very soft NBR rubber, the comfort is simply amazing. I'm not a fan of the tapering perforation, but it helps in ventilating the band. Each tarantula comes with two straps, multiplying the fun in dressing up your watch. It's just like playing dress up with Barbie dolls and their wardrobe. Don't ask me how I know, just go with it. This uncut sequence demonstrates how quick and easy it is to switch bands. The buckle is equally easy enough to secure with its dual pin configuration. The black strap gives it a stealthy and sporty personality. If you want a touch of class, an Artem sailcloth strap is guaranteed to enhance the look of this tarantula. This is my favorite combination of this watch and this loopless full black stitch strap adds a much needed restraint to an otherwise unconventional timepiece. Artem sailcloth straps are durable and weather resistant, a definite addition on top of a beautifully textured strap. If you want to add a bit more life into this watch, it will also work with your preferred Horween leather strap. It's a definite acquired taste but it's adventurous at best. That's me playing around with the watch on the table and on the screen. So far, I found that it's a solid design but not exactly groundbreaking. Let's now switch to a side-to-side -side comparison against their previous offering, Cobra. Visually, it looks like it's a totally different animal aside from its namesakes. The brand eliminated the primary complaint that I have about the ceiling height of the crystal and removing this space made the profile more compact. Dial-wise, it's also much more open and welcoming compared to the Cobra that forces you to focus on the scale and needles. Of the two, it's clear which resembles a watch and which is likely a time machine reactor. From below, the Cobra has a fun but option-limiting unique connector system while the Tarantula can still use your conventional spring bars and straps. Oat still has this amazing articulation because of their lugless design but there's more strap on the sides so in this case rather than below. The Cobra can make the case for the more comfortable fit on the wrist but the Tarantula can crawl under your sleeve better. Try holding on to that metal image. And now for a closer examination. One of the biggest draws of these watches is the tremendous step which is often a double-edged sword as it increases the case height. Here's where they created a visual illusion of thinness. This step between the bezel and case fools your eyes to thinking that it's a thin watch. It is sleeker than its predecessor and this is highlighted even more on its own. It's also a welcome change to have this skeletonized rotor. These slats are also represented on the straps, unifying the design further. The simple buckle is also a good choice rounding out the exterior of the piece. These forces your eyes to focus on the dial and there's much more to see. There's so much layering on this scale alone. This provides volumetric interest rather than just displaying the information. The race wandering hour cage uses its dimensionality for contrast. No issues in legibility here. But this is what really excited me with this watch. I mentioned previously that the complication needs a running seconds indicator to show you that it's actually active. I even told this to the brand personally. And like a personal genie, Atowak made my wishes come true with a shuriken running seconds indicator on top of this wandering hour structure. Now I can be both a pirate and a ninja at the same time. I mean, you can keep turning this thing all day long and it never gets old. Oh, and that loom is also fantastic. 
I love seeing these products that come up with amazing features despite their materials and resources constraints. They cleverly use lightweight materials to support a complicated mechanism that's mounted on a mass-produced Asian caliber. They kept the retail down under the $3,000 mark while offering features that can be found on watches multiple times its cost. Yeah sure, I've said that before, and who actually listens to this scrawny watch pirate? Well, this brand did. Now, about that rebrand. So microbrands out there learn a lesson from the Atowak Tarantula. This could have been a very derivative design, but they managed to refresh it, package it in a more compact uh, watch profile and it's now more desirable because it added that one feature that this watch pirate suggested. Well, I like to think that I suggested it, but it might have been suggested by other people as well. But nevertheless, by listening to its, to its audience, the Atwak Tarantula now has a place in many people's collections. Now, on the other hand, another we're going to talk about another brand that I haven't roasted as of yet. It's another brand that's been uh, powering this channel, but so far I haven't found a way to roast it. But there are some things that I would like to mention. It's not perfect, but this uh, redesign from Artem Straps it's actually quite fascinating. We usually see redesigns on watches, but this time around, we're going to talk about redesigns from a watch strap company. And that's our blueprint segment um, subject for the moment, the redesigns of the Artem Straps loopless collection and buckles. Let's recap what a sail cloth strap is. I'm guilty of thinking that a sail cloth is a cloth used for sailing. Cut me some slack, okay? But a cell cloth is, in fact, a highly resistant material carefully blended to be both flexible and weatherproof. This is so durable that it can withstand rigorous abuse from harsh elements. Artem has perfected this material, offering them in both a loopless and conventional buckle tang setup. The version 1 of the buckle had this angular shape that felt like a less aggressive Panerai hardware. It does have that dual texture finish that classes up the piece a little. This is now replaced with a sleeker and tapered down version that brings it closer to its clasped siblings. On the wrist, it sits comfortably and it feels a tad little softer than before. Artem always had a certain allure that I do not see on other brands. Through the years of owning some, I'm pleased to see how much refinement went to each generation of their straps. I was there when they used to offer just a black color tone, which was surprisingly versatile as many of my watches could happily enjoy an Artem's company. They offered these straps on varying stitches and certain class styles. They expanded their deployment offerings, which always had a robustness to them, yet finished with finesse textures. It closes shut nicely and feels much more premium than other generic brands. They also gave you the choice between a conventional or quick-release spring bar. The ease of swapping out these bands really made dressing up watches quite enjoyable and making these videos a lot more fun. The only drawback from this is that all of my straps are used quite heavily. But I'm happy to report that these Artems still look amazing despite such. Now the family continues to grow as Artem now offers a third color option, the khaki green. That may not sound much, and me personally, I would be content with just having the black and blue versions. But I want more, even early on. Artem delivers with this rather earthy and natural feeling field color. For now, Artem is offering this with matching stitch colors, but I'm sure that they'll come up with additional configurations in the future. That's also something I love about this brand. They're not really bound by demand nor dictated by sales margins. It's all about what the enthusiasts love. As a company built by watch enthusiasts, they have the experience and knowledge of what works for your timepiece. They curated their products not just for the most possible combinations, what fits best for the particular watch design. That intimate relationship born out of conversing in small watch groups really gives a personal feeling not just for the product but also for the brand. 
It's like how Zelos became famous for its personal service from the founder of the brand itself. Artem replicates that spirit with its straps. They do offer these straps in different width options, so you do have some sizes to choose from. These new khaki straps really projects a different kind of personality just by the sheer simplicity of the color. It taps to your horological knowledge knowing that this color was used heavily decades ago. Contrast that with the blue version, you can immediately see that this feels more contemporary. Want to hype it up a bit? Use Artem's RM deployments. This slim and classy hardware really elevates the fit and finish of not just the strap, but also any watch. It does take some getting used to as it may snag your skin at times. If this is too much to pull off, then you can always go back to the conventional buckle setup. Both of these use the same strap, so in this case, another hardware will do. Most will just buy another set of course, but many would love this sort of playability. Speaking of playability, I have been playing with Artem straps for almost 3 years now and I have some first-hand time-tested experience of its durability. Like with most things, it's not perfect and it's bound to show some wear and tear through the years. This particular two-piece strap went to the most hellish and unforgiving torture it could ever be subjected to my wife's wrist. Some cracks develop, some loose threads here and there, and the underlining is a little worn out, but it still kept its luster from the face of utter ruin and destruction. Yes, my wife's wrist may just be where watches go to die, but these straps will live on to tell the tale. Back to the redesigns, the new class now have more aggressive lines and clear corners compared to the previous versions. This new shape profile also affects the way light wraps around the polished surface. Notice how different it looks like. It has a totally different personality. From the sides, the class seem identical, but the new model is a little shorter and more compact. There are some improvements from the inside of the class bridges as well. The lines are sharper and the mechanical action is crisper altogether. This is the premium feeling that many expect from luxury watches. This is often lost from mass-produced hardware for the sake of saving time or resources. Yes, these straps, buckles, and clasps are not the most affordable in the market, but it's certainly much better in quality. For those of you looking to elevate your watch game, don't forget that your straps and buckles also deserve your attention. Design-wise, these refinements show a commitment to their audience and product, something we rarely see with accessories for your timepieces. I was really surprised at how Artem Strap uh, refined their buckles. They didn't have to do that. They could just like reproduce the same buckles over and over again or order them from wherever factory that they're um, ordering them from. But these redesigns and refinements elevates the quality even more. And that also is reflected on how they are making their sail cloth uh, material. It's a lot easier now to break in than before and it has a slightly more slimmer profile, which is a big plus, especially for these uh, bulky straps. And that is a blueprint for subtly refreshing your collections. And we've now arrived to our viewer comment section. So we'll begin with a G-Shock comment from the GAB001. Again, this is another of those uh, new uh, G-Shock analog designs that's still being refreshed by uh, G-Shock, which is uh, a very good sign that there's interest on it. But this um, commenter has a different take on this. On on all analog G-Shocks altogether. Mui SRI says, For me, any watch with digital and analog is a huge failure. Also, any watch that I can't read at a glance. So, most of the octagonal or round Casio, but not only are huge failures. But not only, I guess he's saying here, 
So all octagonal and round Casios, but not only Casios. I guess, I, I guess that's what he's trying to say here. But my watch is a GMWB 5000 D1ER. So, okay. So now I know where he's coming from. I own a negative display GD35 OBR and I like it. I could read it in low light without the need of active auto light. Okay. So he is really just a big fan of digital uh, displays. However, I don't agree that those analog watches are, are failures. Maybe it is harder to see because uh, many watches, many analog watches tend to you make their hands a little bit slimmer and he might be having a hard time reading those uh, slim hands. But there are a lot other analog watches that have very pronounced and prominent hands, hours and, and minutes hands. Or maybe he is also uh, looking at the second hand, has be, which has traditionally been uh, a slim needle of a hand. So maybe that's something that's uh, making it hard for him to read. But I don't agree that these are failures and um, mainly because of legibility. Watches nowadays are not um, really for reading time ironically for the most part some most watches now are really worn as fashion even for us men so we have to admit that but Mui here or Maui Mui here is saying that that's a big thing for him that it needs to be legible it needs to be read it's a timekeeping device okay I understand that RJCQ8DD says, The one watch collection is a myth. Yes, I agree. It's a myth. Actually, it's a misnomer. It's, it doesn't exist. A collection, by definition, should be more than one item. More than one thing. So, please stop saying one watch collection. That um, phrase was um, taken from the Zillos Aurora 38mm review that I had. I used that as, uh, not a metaphor, but a reference to many people's uh, sentiments about a one watch uh, idea or sentiment that you can only just, if you're going to wear just one watch, then this. But please, stop using the one watch collection phrase. And that's also something that's... Uh, uh, triggering but, um, many people are also uh, triggered by such a such a phrase uh, th that should be eliminated that should be banned from any channel and RJ is right Junior Johnson 5961 says hi Jason hi Junior next Thigo O D stuff 1036 says about the uh, frogman well, actually, this is about that short that I released recently about the redesign or the ultimate MRG Frogman if I designed it myself. Here's what he has to say. It would be even more perfect if it was symmetrical. Thumbs up. Uh, no, because the Frogman's asymmetrical design is the iconic feature of that watch. So, no. Not, well, look. Not everything needs to be symmetrical. If you look at the G-Shock uh, dial, very rarely that they ever have anything that's fully symmetrical. So that's one of the characteristics of G-Shock. They intentionally make it asymmetrical for their dials. But for the Frogman, it's even more so because it's the actual case that's like shoved on, on the left side of the of the, the not equator but the, uh, on the center of the the band and that has been iconic it has a function because it lessens the probability of you hitting the watch when you you know bend your wrist it, it's just the a, such a strong design that it sticks with you it's it I guess that's also why um, many people are asking for it to be like symmetrical because their their minds and their their eyes really wants to center it out. I can 
uh, redesign it in a way so that you can like just I could just literally just push it there and show it to you. But then it doesn't look like a Frogman anymore. We've known through the years that the Frogman is asymmetrical, is aligned on one side, and I cannot uns- I cannot bring myself as a designer to well, I cannot bring myself to bring it and, and put it at the center you know but please don't ask for that because that's the the one of the most iconic and the strongest design memorable design of the front Melika Raman 25 uh, says what should I go for? The silver one, green one, or blue one? Any advice? He's talking about the GM2100 here. Well, it's up to you. It's a it's a color preference. Um, if you want legibility, well, then go for the, the dark blue one. That's the better one. If you want a little bit more color, then the green one. If you want something that's a little bit more monochromatic and traditional, then go for the silver one. That's how I would um, tackle it, but everyone as a t- totally different preference um i would ra- i would rather give an advice to a little bit more specific um uh, taste if you could tell me what kind of taste you have then maybe i'll i'll give you a little bit more subjective uh, advice better steps said omega was here really gave this watch a tacky feel yes that was the that was the word that i was looking for but i my very limited pirate vocabulary um, eluded me on that and he said that being said Omega will remove that silly advertisement and in time that watch will go up in value specifically because of that silly advertisement well it's not going to be included in the other uh, ultra deeps for sure the other ultra deeps are still being sold right now but with a regular smooth dial but this one has that very textured and accurate dial they say that it's a representation of the mariana trench or the challenger deep but yes that just made it a lot tackier i mean they don't they didn't have to like say that omega was here they could just like put a subtle omega there like how rolex uh adds an engraving of the rolex crown on their crystals and actually omega does that too with their moons moon watches why not just do that misaligned somewhere on the on the on the crystal well that would kind of feel like uh, inappropriate because i mean if it wasn't the crystal, it means that Omega didn't actually reach the deep. So, <laughs> okay. So you have to put it on the dial itself, but just put an Omega logo there and an Omega emblem there. That's hard to see oh, when you put a black, black light and that's where you see it. That That's fine enough for me. Or even some outlines of the map. That's even better than just like Omega was here. That's that. that just really um, brought down that uh, watch to me. Giant 5968 says about the Lesotho original CQ costing $10,000. I've tried it on. Not worth the asking. Well, okay. That's also subjective to me. I feel that every brand needs to, of course, have their own markups. And I know the markups of these uh, brands now. It's multiple times the cost of their uh, their watches. But maybe Jainat is trying to like look for other watches in the same category and yes for ten thousand dollars maybe i could find a much better dive watch than the cq actually i would prefer the a jlc polaris for that kind of price range um but i still think that the ten thousand dollars asking for uh uh, uh, original uh, Glasuta original uh, CQ is not that bad, you know. Uh, if you could actually get this at a steeper discount, because that's what they're asking, but then they're really not going for those uh, those values. Oftentimes, these are sold at a discount, even a, a, a discount on the authorized dealers. So maybe you can get it for what nine thousand, eight thousand bucks, or if you go 
pre-owned route is even better. What I'm saying there is that their design and quality after holding it on your hand is much higher than any uh, dive watch that, that Rolex is even uh, producing at that price. Of course, Rolex is a totally different uh, animal when it comes to uh, value retention, but when it comes to craftsmanship, I feel that the Glasuto original is very underrated. It could pass off as a really good um, artisan watch even, even though it's a dive watch. So maybe, yeah, take a look at the Glasuto. But, but I can't blame you if you say that it's not worth the asking because you may have a lot more experience and a lot more uh, options for the $10,000 price. And actually, that's the common question that most uh, watch dealers get. Like uh, Marco Ferrante once mentioned that, or even uh, Roman Sharp mentioned that too, that if you ask someone, uh, uh, give a suggestion for the $10,000 price range, that's the most common that they would get from, on the luxury uh, end market. So there is a ton of options out there. May not, uh, the Glasuta original, compared to others, may not be worth the asking, but on its own, I think it's not a, it's not a bad deal. And yeah, again, you can get it at a discount. Okay, so Melvin Ramirez 4790 here follows up. It's good to know that there are Filipino micro brands out there. I'm looking forward to your review of them. And also, this is a an update. The Guzman watches has reached out uh, to me, and they are sending in their watches for review. So, like what I said, I'm going to hold out to that. Um, I'm going to hold out to my promise. I'm going to make. Uh, English uh, version of the watch review and a Tagalog version for the Filipinos that want to listen to me fumble around with my Filipino vocabulary. So, yes, we're finally going to review our first ever Filipino brand in the channel. I'm so excited. Hopefully, we'll be here in the next few weeks. And also, I'm trying to uh, catch up with my my routine here ever since my uh, job change it was a very very hard for me to keep up with a watch review routine but I'm trying to uh, make up uh, with all of my lost time and um, hopefully we'll see the de Guzman in the channel in the next few weeks okay so Dan Schlax 7188 says here I only seen the CW logo on video reviews and really didn't care for it however I recently saw it in the Met at a watch show in Chicago and I have to say that it's not or obtrusive as I thought it's very well done great show entertaining as always yes the CW redesign is a really uh, great redesign of a brand and We've seen this before when Beneciatico also rebranded and we suggested the Atowak to do the same. And CW is a really great example of just minimizing and, and consolidating their design elements into one singular recognizable design that um, everyone now is, not everyone, but a lot of people are loving. And like what uh, Dan here is saying, sometimes you have to see it on the on the watch now why do we always say that well because sometimes when you turn and 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 flip the the watch you see how the logo and all of its labels coincide or work with the watch itself so when say for example a label is too big it occupies much of your visual um, area at many angles and sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want to create a little bit of suspense to your product. Uh, so it's not going to, so your eyes are not going to focus on the logo. Say for example, at the side of the watch, if you see the side profile of the watch, you don't really need to see the logo anywhere else there. Even though if it's the crystal is domed then it could refract that because that distracts from your enjoyment of looking at the side of the champers or the, the lug design you know? like with this specific watch already uh, the five is uh, on the on the crystal is kind of taking my attention instead of that that hole there on the on the case bezel for example so sometimes 
you need to hide design elements so your eyes or the eyes the eyes of the audience can focus on the on the specific part that you wanted to highlight when you turn the product from one side to from one angle to another so the less the those uh, labels are the better but say for example on the case of the uh, TVA the G-Shock TVA wherein the labels are part of the design you want to see part of it because that's what makes it unique again that's based on the what do you call it? Uh, the Swiss design um, Swedish or Swiss um, font design um, philosophy and you've seen that also in many aircraft and vehicles that they have these warning signs or instructional uh, text on certain panels to denote that hey that is a articulating or a moving panel and that has been a staple in Japanese design if you go into their mecha uh, and anime uh, art you could see that more prominently and that's why that uh, TVA was a little bit more um, you know nostalgic to many people but again Typography is a big element of products and when used properly, you will get these kinds of responses. Ray Ray 3349 says, Sorry Skipper, any chance you could, in all due respect, be say a little bit ruder as a beginning. I find you becoming too gentle, saying like whatever those uh, uh, emojis are. No, I am not becoming more gentle. I think uh, Ray Ray is trying to initiate a mutiny in this channel. Do not believe Ray Ray. I am not getting gentler. I'm just grasping for words. That's what we could say. Or maybe I'm less grumpier. Why am I less grumpier? Well, maybe because of the um, job change. Maybe that's why. Ray, you're almost banned from the show for that. Broad Arrow. 518 says I have a Filipino wife so you have a good chance to distract her while I hide my new watch and fake my death when she finds out the cost <laughs> yes no um, that is not true Filipino wives will find out eventually they will know that you bought a watch and there's no escaping that that I can tell you and um, another thing that you should know about uh, wives is that even after your death they will be your wife so uh, make sure that you know your accountings appropriately and make sure that yeah you know the costs of your watches and plan this out that's why we released that service to uh, help you help you out with your wives so well yes we love our wives our wives are the very essence of life it's why we work hard for them. but they always have to contend with our watch collections so please please be a lot careful we look after for your uh, well-being make 77 5 daily says happiness is a butterfly which when pursued is always behind your grass but which if you will sit down quietly may align upon you Daniel Hawthorne okay so she's quoting here Daniel Hawthorne and one thing that I would tell Daniel Hawthorne is that this is not true even if I just sat down there and waited for Omega to actually make a good watch design they did not do that so my waiting is for nothing tell Mr. Hawthorne I'm still unhappy even after sitting down quietly for that Seamaster update Noel926 says, Haha, watch enthusiasts look after each other for a weekly fee. Mine is wife number two. Yes, so he has wife number two, and I think Noel already called the number. Sadly, nobody uh, responded because that, act, that number doesn't actually exist. But anyway, thank you, Noel, for notifying us that you have wife number two. Piston Burner 6448 says, I disagree. It's because of the wife that people need extremely precise timepieces to never be late. Uh, yes, okay, so I think this is wife number four. 
So you may need the G-Shock for that. Yes, he is, he is right. So you need an extremely accurate timepiece not to be late for your wife. Maybe not the expensive ones. You could buy the F91s, and like, you know, so you can have that like ready all the time. And you could use that to time your other watches too. So that's a good tip there. Where was that other comment? Okay. Here's a big one. Barry Ver... Uh, Barry Ver... QL 2346 says, Aha! Good video. I keep complaining about watch prices. After many weeks of complaining, I notice the price is discounted. Then my wife encourages me to buy. Well, Barry, you have a very big problem here. You think that you have... A, you have appeased your wife. And now she's encouraging you to buy that watch. This is actually a very bad sign. Let me break it down to you what's going to happen here. Once you, you've shown your wife that you bought this watch at a discounted price, she will now notice that you have this ability, this skill to actually look for discounted things. That is a very, very bad idea for us husbands. Now make no mistake, I want you all to buy your watches at a discounted price. But never show your wife that you have the ability to do so. So you have to fake it out sometimes. Sometimes you buy watches at a retail price, sometimes at a discounted price. So that she doesn't realize that you have that ability. Because the moment that she does, here's what's going to happen. The next step is that she's going to ask you to shop for groceries. Why? Because she knows that you're going to look for those coupons and use those as discounts on your next grocery shopping. And then you'll be shopping for other things at a discounted price or at a better rate such as insurance. And now, not so long after that, you're doing what she's supposed to do. You're doing the shopping, you're doing the groceries, you're doing these accountings. Now, once you're doing what she's been doing, she's now going to have a lot of free time. And that free time that she has is going to be dedicated now to watching you even more. So do you think you can really purchase that watch at a discounted price when she's actually more vigilant than ever before? Think about that. That is the... That, that happens all the time. That's the natural progression of these uh, situations. And lo and behold, right after that, she'll be um, putting up businesses. She'll be working hard, uh, climbing the corporate ladder. And now you'll be ending up as a being house husband. Do you really like that? Is that what we men really want? And that will lead into, you know, the inevitable divorce. Well, or many men would actually want that. But so watch pirates out there. Be careful at showing your ability to fish and hunt for discounts. You have to make it look like that you have that skill or that, that you don't have that skill from your wife. The moment she does, it will all go downhill from there. So Barry, this is a warning for you. Be careful. No other watch service out there can save you from this predicament and finally i would want to address uh, a thing i wanted to include this in the past uh, video in the last video but i couldn't and um, i wanted to acknowledge that um, a few weeks ago franco uh, visited chivas and you could find that uh, that video in my instagram it's really just me talking about um well, me in the office and him uh, visiting uh, how it's a great honor. But it, it really is a privilege. It really is a great honor to meet a viewer that's um, been loyal to the channel, not just recently, but according to Franco, he's been a follower of the channel ever since the, you know, tabletop view, uh, watch, talking hands, um, days that I didn't reveal my face and I'm really really appreciative of, of that and uh, 
I can't imagine uh, meeting someone from uh, three years ago who followed the channel uh, when it was a little bit smaller. It's still small right now, but um, a little bit smaller and less known. And to finally meet him in the flesh, and, and it's a, an amazing experience. It's not the first time that I've met a viewer. You've seen, um, at, he's at least the, the fourth one. And, uh, it, but it's still a satisfying feeling that uh, I cannot fully comprehend or co- fully articulate even. And um, also he's a member of the Relojeros Ivero Americas, which is a, a Spanish-speaking WhatsApp group, which is a really active WhatsApp group. If you could like join that, um, I'll try and see if... Uh, I'll contact them if anyone wants to join. Uh, I'll link it in the description below, uh, so you uh, be free to join there. Uh, so if you are a Latin America viewer and you speak Spanish or maybe uh, anywhere else, then that could be a WhatsApp group that could uh, pique your interest. But nevertheless, uh, going back to the to the idea of making this channel and actually meeting people from uh, from other parts of the world is an amazing feeling I, I i can't really imagine how i could start a, a channel in such a small uh island and actually meet the people from around the world to who, who actually view uh, my channel it's not really the most entertaining channel out there i try to you know include as much information as possible and i try to make it as entertaining as possible self-deprecating even but um, I'm just happy that um, you are all supporting me and these um, people like uh, like Franco, uh, you like uh, Franco here, uh, have been uh, great to me. And uh, Franco, Jeff, Stu, and uh, those are uh, the ones that have met me already. Chris, who's also a local um, viewer, uh, it just makes me continue doing this uh, for the channel it's not easy uh, it, it takes a lot of time a lot of preparation and uh, right now i've just winged it because i didn't prepare anything which is uh, which <laughs> which says about uh, the production of this um, channel but i really appreciate everyone who's uh, re- reached out uh, to me through the uh, through the past months and years and who's expressed their interest in the channel as we continue to grow and um, it has it has changed my life uh, to a totally different uh, career direction and now the, st- the struggle is still there we're still trying to get our feet um, planted we have these projects um, behind the scenes so hopefully we can uh, deliver a little bit more uh, for the channel and the more that you tell me what you want to see in the channel the better it becomes because I really wanted to integrate the viewer into this channel even more that's why we have the comment section and uh, the more that I can interact with you whether in the comment section or personally if I ever meet you uh, the better it's more not just more content more interesting content but it you are actively shaping this channel and that's something that I really wanted to do. And the more that I could do that with the time that I have, the, the better. And hopefully maybe like even include my, my boys whenever they have the free time. So thank you once again, Franco. Uh, uh, Relojeros Ibero Americas. And uh, hope to see any of you uh, in the near future. And finally, Mr. Zilos has some comments about the last video. No, the worst enemy of the watch collector is the shipping companies. The wife, which I don't have, is a close second. Okay, so shipping even within the same state is a horrible experience in the 21st century. From around the other side of the world, forget it. It would be cheaper and quicker to fly there and pick up the watch yourself. I decided to relent and not report you to Elshan but you should do some kind of punishment for putting that Panerai wart on a Zilos. I'll think of something. Yes, uh, thank you once again, Mr. Zilos, for your kind recommendations. And yes, actually, what Mr. Zilos here is, what's going to happen? Somebody is going to 
uh, get the watch from the Philippines. I have a cousin in the Philippines right now. Benji, shout out to you. Uh, he's going to get the watches from uh, De Guzman and then he's going to bring it here. Actually, my father-in-law is going to get it and then he's going to pass it on to my cousin Benji and then Ben, when he comes to back to Aruba, he'll just bring the watches. That's what's going to happen. And yes, that's how we're going to review the first Filipino watch brand in the channel. And also, I'll be waiting for that punishment, Mr. Zeros. I humbly accept that. But it was fun <laughs> putting that Panerai award on that Zeros. And that is all for this show. See you next time. On today's show, we'll be talking about the straps and finally <clears throat> in your viewer comments well you're now talking about your wives and how you have to handle them and yeah. how oh man <clears throat> on today's show we'll be sh on today's show on today's show, we'll be talking about how Atua continues to milk a previously difficult to achieve complication into another microbrand bestseller. In our blueprint segment, we'll be talking about how Atua, not Atua again. Oh. <laughs> coffee. I need coffee. How many takes have I done this? Like 10? Oh, goodness. Let's do this. One last time. On today's show, we'll be talking about how Atua continues to milk a previously difficult complication to achieve into another microbrand bestseller in our, in our, in our blueprint.